everybody and welcome back to my channel. Again, thank you for coming back and if you're new, thank you for joining me and I do hope you enjoy my channel and I do hope you enjoy my content. And today we are going to be talking about the most bougie foundation I will ever try. I will never own unless I hit lotto sometime in the near future. But I've seen it, I've looked at it, I've admired it. I've seen people try it on YouTube. Uh, and now I get to try it. Not the full thing. Not like I got pure or anything like that. But I did get this sample, this very deluxe, it's upside down, type sample from La Prairie. And I got it from uh, tryit.condonast.com. Uh, I belong to... Uh, glam spotters and things like that and they will sometimes send you like really cool expensive things to try sometimes full size but this is an extremely cool sample because they even include the sponge that does come with the actual product now this foundation get ready for it if you've seen Tati's video you already know how much it is because she did this whole she used to do that WTF thing where she would try out really expensive uh, makeup products. It is $230. Two, $230 for a foundation. I could never, as I said, I could never afford it. Will not ever be actually purchasing it. But goodness, I am really excited to try it on my face. Now, the reason for the exceedingly high price tag of this product is A, it's La Prairie. La Prairie is a luxury makeup company. But I pulled up some information. Now, I have to tell you that it comes in 12 shades of crap. <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but uh, it's 12 shades of fair and medium. I, I didn't even see a dark shade on the website. The other thing is the ingredients were quite difficult for me to find. I looked it up right now I'm on the Neiman Marcus site. And, of course, it's sold at Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom's and things like that. But the ingredients I had to actually search for, because they were not listed on La Prairie, uh, they were not listed on the Neiman Marcus site. The only thing they're telling you about is the fact that it has a caviar in it. It's not actual caviar, because you're not going to smell like fish. It's caviar extract. Let me just show you the shade range if this will focus. There you go. I don't see a dark shade really in that entire bunch. And that's just, I mean, there's one kind of dark shade, but that's just not cool. The four shades that I got are all on the light to medium. I could probably pull off any one of these for a sample card. A woman or a man of color with any type of deep skin tone could not try this sample. You know, so let's just read a little bit about it, and then I'm going to tell you the research that I did and what I came up with as far as the ingredients and what it's supposed to do. Now, it does say that you have a, if you have cat hair, no, not if you, it doesn't say if you have cat hair, I just always have cat hair. Will I ever not have cat hair on my face? I am sweating, so like everything, it's like if you dumped a bit, batch of feathers on me right now, I would look like a chicken because they would all just stick to me. Because I think it's about 99 currently in New York. We're supposed to have like over 100 degree weather. I got a call from Con Edison saying we might lose our power. Whatever. It does say on the Neiman Marcus website that if you have a question about it, you can send an email to a specialist and they will answer your email. So I'm sure if I emailed them about the ingredients, would have sent them to me. But I don't think it should be that difficult to find out the ingredients of something that I'm going to put on my face. Now, it says skin caviar. It's also, by the way, I should mention, it does have in the top. Do you know where the steel foundation has the concealer on top and the foundation on the bottom. It is the same type of pra practicing. No, it is the same type of packaging though. So it says skin caviar concealer and foundation. It does have SPF 15, which I don't think is really high enough. They might do that only that 15 for flashback purposes. It's a luxurious cream emulsion that offers full yet natural looking coverage. The exquisitely matched concealer camouflages under eye dark circles. And I don't have the concealer, so I cannot and will not be able to speak to it. 
but it says Built formula supporting firming with legendary caviar extract. A brilliant fusion of skincare and cosmetic artistry. Skin Caviar Foundation is the foundation of perfection. Those are their own words. Okay, it also says it includes the actual version. It includes a two times magnifying mirror in the cap and a foundation sponge and a precision concealer brush. Another thing that they do give you on the website is how to determine your shade range based on your undertones, which I thought was interesting because most do not do that. So, let me pull up the actual ingredients and then we will go over it with you. Oh, one more. They do say how to use it. Shake well before applying. I can shake this card. I don't think it's going to make a difference. And then they're telling you to blend with the specific sponge that they're giving you. I'm going to try one half with the sponge they're giving me and the other half with the beauty blender and or my fingers to see if it makes any difference. In the full size version you do get one fluid ounce which is standard mostly across the board for foundations. So it's $230 an ounce. Mm. Now let's take a look at the ingredients. So I was able to locate the ingredients on Beautypedia. First ingredient is the octanoxate, which is the sunscreen. So that is the technically active ingredient. And it says the other ingredients are inactive. Now everything up front is your typical cyclomethicone, all the dimethicones, all the slip agents, all of the butylene glycols, all the things that are going to make it feel good on the skin and have slip and smoothability. The caviar extract is the 12th ingredient down. Granted, it is the first ingredient after all of the, I guess, necessary ingredients, but there are some foundations that have those in good for you ingredients at the top and those other ingredients in the middle or underneath them. So the efficacy of, I think, the caviar re really remains to be seen. I don't know. Now, according to what I've read, there was a study done by Aquabio Technologies. And according to what I read from them, they did a double blind study guarding the foundation and what it is supposed to do and what it is said to do. Supposedly, caviar extract can help with sagging skin, uh, wrinkles, fine lines, essentially all of the anti aging things that you want to address. Now their study was supposedly a 12-week study and it said that I think 32 women out of their study saw these effects. What I didn't research was whether Aquabio Technologies had any part of selling this caviar extract to the company. So again, I don't necessarily always believe these studies and double-blind studies and tests and things like that. If I dig deeper into aqua biotechnologies, I might be able to find out whether or not they have any part of selling that particular ingredient. Caviar in itself is a protein and has fatty acids and all those things, amino acids, all those things are good for you on the inside and they are good for you on the outside. But again, with the ingredient having the place that it does in the foundation, I just, I don't know. I would have to do much more research and I would have to actually use the foundation for the 12 weeks specified to see if I saw any difference. But again, I'm not going to do that unless somebody out there has a winning lotto ticket for at least $500 that I could go buy it. Some people might question the fact that it is not vegan and obviously it is not. And I do not know the status of La Prairie as far as their cruelty-free status. I did read something on harvesting of caviar. Basically, caviar comes from sturgeon, sturgeon eggs, which is the fish eggs. Now, supposedly, there is a way to remove the eggs and harvest the eggs without harming the sturgeon. So supposedly, by, <laughs> this is so funny, by massaging the sturgeon in a certain way, they can get the sturgeon to release their eggs without actually harming them. I'm only giggling because I'm sitting, I'm imagining people sitting there with gloves on <laughs> giving belly rubs to sturgeon. I just had an image in my head. So that is the basic idea of this foundation. Now how about we try it on? <laughs> 
I have already prepped and uh, my face with moisturizer and primer. I am going to zoom you in a little bit so you can try to get an up close look at what's going on. My mirror is in an awkward place, unfortunately, because of what I have to do. So I'm going to do the best I can opening this up. I just took the plastic thing out, but it did have some information on the inside that I just wanted to look at quickly. Well, <laughs> I will tell you, for all of the research that I did, I guess I should have opened this up first because they do list the ingredients in here. But it's so darn small, I would not, even with my glasses on, be able to actually read that. I said, but they do give you the instructions now. This is a very nice little package. Now, the colors that I have here are Satin Nude. This is Satin Nude, Honey Beige, Porcelain Blush, Creme Pesh. Pesce in Italian is fish. That's interesting. It's not a powder puff. It is your typical foundation sponge that you would get with the compact foundations, um, the what in goodness name, like the wet and wild one, but it's it's very soft. It gives you the little, I'm going to be keeping this forever. It fits a little nicely on my finger. Let's try to shade match these. I am actually going to try, I think the porcelain blush may be too pinky. Satin nude sounds more like it would be my shade. I don't want to waste a drop of this stuff. Oh, it's very, very, very liquidy. I don't even want to hold it up. I will drop it. Could be. It's a little bit dark. Oh, I'm, this stuff spilled like everywhere. Sponge is kind of crappy. I'm going to try my finger for a minute. But I almost spilled all of it. No! Let me mix it with some of the porcelain blush. I said it's very, very liquidy. Can't even show you or else it'll spill. See how light that is? And yet, that's too dark, so guess what? I just mixed them. Ha! Huh? I'm not really liking this sponge very much. This sponge. And the sponge, like, this sponge takes it all off. Let me try my damn darn fingers. Okay, they just like took it all off. Just took it right off. Alright, um, hmm, I'm going to mix it together again on my, on my hand. There are the two colors. Yeah, okay. It's, could it be my primer? This is going on terribly. I don't even know what to say right now, to be honest with you. It's not looking very good. It dries actually very quickly. Um, it feels a little heavy on the skin. I don't like the coverage that it's giving. You know what, I'm going to take off this side. I'm gonna go use my bougiest primer. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just have some moisturizer. I'm gonna put on moist a different moisturizer on this side of my face. On this side of my face, I use my Tarte Time and, Time and Smoothest Pouring Primer. Not pouring. That, that thick primer that is pore filling, I use that. And I want to see if it's the primer that's making it go on weird. 
because I just don't like the way it looks on my skin right now. Again, my lighting is horrible, my setup is horrible. I hope you can see. I look forward to the day when I have good lighting, a good space to film, and all that good stuff. I use a really bougie primer. I got this sample because this is the only reason I placed a full order is because I wanted to try this YSL primer. This is the Touche Clot uh, Blur Primer. This is a ridiculous primer that I would never buy either. So I'm going to try that. This is a very... It smells off. Ugh. It has that dry paint smell. Uh, it's a very uh, dimethicone primer. And so because this foundation has dimethicone in it, I know that it will work well. I may look into the camera because looking on this side, I don't think you guys get a good view. I even went and got my favorite sponge of the moment instead of this one. So I got this one. Let's try this again. I'm going to mix the two colors in my hand. On my hand, I should say. Decent, decent. I can't talk today. Decent shade match for me. Mix some more. Not a fan. I'm going to use the Lopberry sponge. I'm going to use this the viewfinder a little bit. I said it does dry really, really, really fast. But I didn't see any of the drying agents that normally make a foundation dry down quickly like the denatured alcohol. It's looking okay with this primer. I have $12 foundations that I think look better. I'm gonna try this with the sponge. You know, for as liquidy and runny as it is, it still goes on kind of thick. Oh, I hate the way it looks on my forehead. Now, it does say that it is buildable coverage. I'd say this is a, a medium coverage foundation on its own. To some it may be full. i definitely say it's a high medium coverage because if it was full, full, hopefully it would cover up my blemish. The sponge that they give you is crud. I may use it to apply powder. Do you see how it's hard to blend though? I mean... Okay, it's basically on. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I, I, I don't know. Um, you see the blemish is not completely covered. Focus. You can see it on my skin. I think the other foundations that I've done with you guys have been better. There's my forehead. Ah, uh, it sits, it feels, feels like sticky. It feels sticky. Yeah. It's sitting in some of my lines. Yeah, so that's it so far. It's even sticky on the back of my hand, like my hands are sticking together. It's very weird. I'm going to finish my makeup. Yeah, and I'm going to try to preserve this bit of stuff that I have here. I'm going to let you know how it looks throughout the rest of the day. One thing I can say is that I don't think it goes on well over those thick, heavy primers, especially one that I use, so that's one thing. 
I'll try it. I'm going to set it. I'll come back on when I have finished my makeup and I will let you know and I'll do a check-in for the day. See you in a bit. Hey guys, I'm in my car. I just thought I'd take you with me. I can't mount my camera so I can't drive while I'm uh, doing this. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Yeah, probably. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like out in natural light. Uh, I, you know, I'm looking in the car, the rear view mirror, whatever mirror you want to call it, the vanity mirror. I, I don't know. It's definitely visible on the skin. I'm just, I think it's very heavy. And, and um, I just don't know what to think about it. I'm going to have to see how it wears throughout the day. I said currently it is really, really warm uh, here. And so I want to see how it holds up. But I can definitely like feel it. I think it's definitely foundation-y. I don't like the way it sits in my lines. I think it accentuates any type of lines that I do have. In other areas of my skin, I think it looks okay. I'm still just really, I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I thought I was going to come on here and say I absolutely despise it. I don't despise it right now. I just don't know if I like it. And when you're talking about a $230 foundation, I don't think it should be any question about it. I'm wondering about the skincare benefits. I wish I could try it out for a longer length of time. I might be able to get two uses out of it. I will try to wear it again and then at a later date give you my thoughts on what I thought about it. I don't know, you give me your thoughts. I'll come up a little closer. Let me know what you what you think, what your thoughts are. If you've tried it, if anyone out there has tried this foundation, I would love to know what you think about it. So I'm going to run, run my errands, and I will be back. See you later. Hi, welcome back. So it is now 8.08. It has been a long and hot day. I realized that I did not do a check-in when I first did my makeup but it was about 2 o'clock when I think I finished all of my application. If I look like a hot mess today, it's because I am a literal hot mess. So you figure this foundation has been on for a little over 6 hours, which is a lot less than I typically would wear my foundations for, especially on a typical work day. But it is literally without air conditioning. I can't describe to you how hot it has been. Literally my face was drenched in sweat that I had to keep taking a towel and blot my face. I was doing so much uh, work in the house and as I said, literally dripping with sweat. So if that's not a good test of a foundation and its lasting power and everything else, I, I, I don't know what is. As you can see, I've sweated off all of my eye makeup and my concealer. Uh, but I have to say, when I was in the car, because I did vlog, not vlog, I just did that little quick thing in the car. When I kept, I kept looking in my down mirror. I'm like, I, I think my skin looks good, but I'm not sure. I'm so on the fence about this foundation. I think it looked, aside from sitting in here I think that it, it looked good and smoothing but I definitely felt it it still felt tacky even after I had set my foundation but I think it looked good but I still don't know it's one of those things not that I'm ever gonna buy this foundation but I needed to give you my really true and honest feelings about it and I don't know whether I love it I don't think I hate it tremendously. I don't think I love it, but I want you to see what my skin looks now. I am going to scooch in. Okay. If you can see, well, aside from this, the beads of sweat on my upper lip and everything else, it doesn't really, I mean, it's a little cakey over here. If you can see that. It got less cakey in here because I think it wore off or just the sweat set into my skin. I also should mention, by the way, that that original kind of heavy feeling dissipated slightly when I did use my facial mist that I use all the time, the one from Pure. I didn't use a mattifying setting spray, I just used that 
moisturizing facial mist I, and that seemed to make a slight difference. Now you can see over here where I needed more coverage my blush has worn off and such and my forehead, I'm just going to look in the mirror and see how dark my under eyes are because that's gone but let me look here. It is sitting in my pores a little bit that I can see here. But you know those little polka dots that you get when foundation kind of sits right like in them immediately? Um, yeah, it's worn off kind of on my chin. It's definitely not on my nose anymore. But part of it is still on there and for everything that my face went through today, I'm going to say, again, not that I'll buy it, but I still can't give a definitive opinion. Let me back out again. Because it was, it was just a weird foundation for me. And I'm glad that I don't have it because if I couldn't return it, then I'd be at this really expensive foundation. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really hard to tell. It was, I have to say, a very cool experience to be able to actually try it. I don't know if you could go into like a Neiman Marcus or a Bergdorf or, and where they sell it and just go up to the counter and request a sample of it. I've never done that. So, and if you did request a sample, I don't know if you'd get the little sponge, which I did not like, by the way. But so, my final thoughts are unfortunately not a definitive final thought, but they're just my thoughts. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you can afford it and you want to try it, maybe it looks better on younger skin. I did kind of look the, like the way it looked in the rear view mirror. Let me know your thoughts, especially now what it looks like, and let me know your thoughts what you think it looked like on camera because I'm so indecisive about what my final thoughts are. So that is it, you guys. It is a Sunday night. My t-shirt is drenched. I still have the beads of sweat on my upper lip that I, it's just, I, yeah. Mm, I can't, this, this weather without air conditioning. I don't suggest it. But have a fabulous, fabulous night. Hope you have a fabulous start to your week. Wednesday is the 4th of July. And in case I don't get a video up that I will be wishing you happy 4th of July, then happy, happy 4th of July. Have a fantastic time. Enjoy. I hope it's good weather for all you guys. And I will see you hopefully on a cooler moment in the next one. Bye.